All right, so let's start up with our what is the default position thing. It's just our starting point, then I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of the other stuff. All my arguments feed into each other, and all the things I'm talking about are interrelated. They're all interrelated to each other, so it doesn't really matter where I start. And then I just, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's my presentation style. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Whatever pops into my pretty little head, I'll talk about it. Um, they all fit into each other, and they're all interrelated. So let's start at default position. Do not get confused. If I say relig religious, um, that polytheism seems to be primal and innate, that doesn't necessarily think I mean true and or positive. Remember, tribalism is also primal and innate. Seems to be the default way human beings interact. They, they automatically start forming tribal loyalties. Even in our little town, we grew up in the town Hastings, we started forming tribal rivalries with the guys from Dom Ferry. <laughs> in high school, it escalated to the point where, you know, where there was all this background, we're going to rumble, we're going to fight that one night. No, we never actually traded blows, but it, but it was, you know, for a while there was this rivalry. Intertown rivalries pop up almost automatically. Tribal loyalties ha happen automatically. You remove the social structure of civilization, and tribalism will reassert itself almost automatically. That's what Lord of the Flies is about. That's a Christian allegory, by the way, Lord of the Flies. Did you know that? It was written by a Christian. Yeah, read it. It's one of the classics. It's a cool book. Um, don't remember that much about it off the top of my head. Should have read it in high school. Should have read it in high school. Lord of the Flies, read it. That's on your reading list. You can decide reading list? Yeah, I can do that. It's my channel. That's on your reading list. Read it. Thank you an hour. No, it'll take you, I don't know, four hours. It's a great, it's a really good book. It's a classic to some degree. Um, and it's all about that. They get thrown on an island and the artifice of civilization is stripped away. One of the key arguments Matt Dillahunty has made, that's how we know science is false, science is true and religion is false. Because if you put everyone on a desert island, religion would disappear. No, it wouldn't. It would reassert itself almost automatically as what? Polytheism. Why? Because it seems to be primal and innate. Primal and innate. Agency detection is as common as grass. If you are an atheist, to some degree, you have on purpose disconnected that mechanism on purpose. Now, I'm not saying that gods exist. Remember, you've got to listen carefully. I'm not saying that they're right. I'm not saying it's positive and or right. Tribalism is also primal and innate, and usually tribalism is destructive. For example, <laughs> in my high school, we were tribal, we were squaring off against the kid from the other town, and it could have ended in fights. <laughs> we never, never actually got the blows, but it almost did. One time, like, Stanley, I'm still friends with Stanley, actually. He's on my Facebook page. Or no, maybe he isn't, but, he, but I knew a whole bunch of the guys from Dobbs Ferry. Sometimes they would come to our parties, sometimes we'd go to their parties. And one time, tribal rivalries, you know, showed up. Probably over girls. Usually that's what starts in tribal wars is girls, you know, generally speaking. And like one guy was there, the place we always used to hang out was the field, was Reynolds Field and it was the bleachers. And you'd go there basically every Friday, Saturday night, if there wasn't a party, you'd go to the bleachers and hang out there and there'd be a hundred people drinking and doing whatever. And uh, he was there and I remember, what's up? I went up to him, fight. You know, they were trying to fight us because they're from Tom's Ferry and we're from Hastings. No, it never actually came, came to blows. But, tribal loyalty. Tribalism is primal and innate. So is polytheism. Almost positive. It will re if you put everyone on a desert island, it would reassert itself almost automatically. Religion is to some degree a necessary metastructure, to some degree a necessary metastructure providing social cohesion. Now, I'll go into that in other videos to come, but that is an inescapable... The, the strongest possible, in, uh, I guess I'll go into that in videos to come, but to some degree, when people talk about religion, you know, is, is toxic or whatever, religion provides social cohesion. If you strip away the social cohesion from a society, generally speaking, when you say, like, even Islam, okay, when you're comparing Islam to United States, you wouldn't want to live in Saudi Arabia. Why? It'd be pretty awful, especially if you're a woman. You couldn't drive and there's all this, you know, if you're gay, they'd throw you, they'd probably throw you off a building. <laughs> you're gay? Yeah, okay, well, you know, we do things a little differently here in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, but yeah, can I get married? No. As a matter of fact, we throw you off a building. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly true, but it's true enough. Um, 
So you wouldn't necessarily want to live in Saudi Arabia. So you're comparing Saudi Arabia and saying religion's toxic, but you're not comparing, you're comparing it to the ideal society and not to what would happen if, if that metastructure were taken off. It happens all the time in Africa. It's called hell on earth. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to live in Saudi Arabia, but you would much rather live in Saudi Arabia than Rwanda, <laughs> correct? When, the, when they were at war, when the civil war. It's called hell on earth. You know, religion, Islam was imposed top down, but it provides enough social cohesion that the alternative, it is preferable to the alternative. You strip away Saudi, you strip away the, the top down meta structure, and normally speaking, what happens in African tribal war, tribal war, a stri it's almost around the boards what happens because they don't have enough government structure to hold the government intact without religion. So, Islam imposes, when there's a tribal society and you have a metastructure like Islam, it imposes some discipline on that tribal society, some unity, some social cohesion, and it's necessary. Why? You strip it away and you have warring clans. And that's what happens in those African countries where they don't have strong enough governments. Warring clans. And the pattern's always the same. One strong man gets a hold of like 3,000 guys, they enlist kids. 12-year-old kids with machine guns. You've seen these movies, right? Go watch Hotel Rwanda and all these movies. There's tons of books about this. This is a known phenomenon. They enlist 12-year-old kids, give them machine guns, they shoot everybody in the town, they burn towns down. It's called hell on earth. No, you wouldn't want to live in Saudi Arabia, but it's far preferable to, you know, civil war. Every man for himself and God against all. It's basically how it works. Everyone for himself and God against all. Hell on earth. You see the beginning stages of it in Portland. It's the beginning stages of it. It's what starts to happen when social cohesion erodes. I don't, I'm, wherever you stand on the issue, left, right, center, doesn't matter. Why? Social cohesion erodes, that's normally what happens. People turn into warring clans. Tribal identity reasserts itself. It seems to be primal and innate. So is polytheism. A form of polytheism seems to be primal and innate. Period. End of discussion. I didn't say it's right. I didn't say their gods exist. I said there's a reason why, and that's the important thing to be discussed. Why is the question. Not that their gods necessarily exist. Why are they perceiving and what are they perceiving? Now, some of those perceptions are provable fact. I didn't say demons, devils, and angels. That would be conscious agents. I said psychological realities and entities. That isn't conscious agents. You see the difference? It's a nuanced difference, but it's a pretty obvious difference. Anyways, um... But that's not really where I want to go just yet. So, if the, if the debate is between materialism and idealism, as I've said, idealism wins hands down. If the choice is binary, idealism wins hands down. Why? Materialism is logically inconsistent with itself. Going back to our paradigm, parsimonious. The key about parsimonious, and this is a problem if you're a Christian, we've been doing this wrong the whole time. When you say parsimonious, that means you can't add extra, the least amount of extra entities you add is the more successful candidate option. Christianity almost always can't fit into that paradigm. Why? Because we're always adding an extra thing. No, God is never the simplest explanation. It's an extra thing. <laughs> it's an extra thing. <laughs> I swear to God, you don't need to do it this way. We can do it correctly. And, and clean up all of it almost overnight. Why? Bottom up. Structure your argument bottom up. Parsimonious. One definition is don't add extra entities. Like what? Like the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. There's an infinity of many worlds that you can't see, and they're actual worlds. They're carbon copies of this world, and there's infinities of them. That seems like an extra entity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little. So when you, if you, if you see a, a, a debate between bespectacled egghead, say, Graham Oppie, naturalism is complete unto itself. It doesn't require an expo extra explanation. Why? We know naturalism is true to some degree. We exist. There are natural laws. End of discussion. If, he, and if you said, well, how did we get here? That's usually the How did we get here? The timeless, the timeless entity. <laughs> That's usually the, the, the way things go. Okay, when I say materialism fails, I don't mean naturalism. God, I listen carefully, guys. This is nuanced, but it's not so nuanced that we can't hold every single solitary person accountable to the information I'm giving out here. Why? Because it's almost all provable fact. 
I didn't say God exists. I didn't say polytheism is true. I said it's primal and innate. Seems to be. Seems to be. Almost positive it is. That's the problem. May be debatable. I said it's primal and innate. The default position. Why? Because ascribing of agency is as common as grass. Even if you are an atheist, you have done it. Go watch the rationality rules video that I've talked about a few times, where his subconscious warns him of things up in the road ahead. And for a minute there, he goes, so as if, because when you, your subconscious mind is like a supercomputer, full stop, all of you listening to me, and your subconscious mind is trying to protect you, and it understands reality better than you do, and it's been paying attention when you've been asleep at the wheel. So yeah, it could be a purely psychological subconscious process. I am perfectly willing to accept that. I am not going to extrapolate extra entities. Why well, I don't have to, just stick to the facts. Just stick to the facts. Why? Because the facts put us in free enough, far enough into free, theist friendly territory that we don't need to do anything else. We're in theist friendly. We're in theist friendly territory right now. Why? This is my channel, <laughs> right? Okay, I'm a Christian. Jesus loves you. <laughs> I'll smuggle Jesus in sooner or later. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Did I mention that? <laughs> I smuggled him in. <laughs> Did work. Okay. Um, uh, Okay, so the less extra entities we put in the equation, the better. When I say naturalism is true, I don't mean materialism. Materialism failed a hundred years ago. Materialism failed a hundred years ago at the dawn of the quantum era. It was defended by none other than Einstein himself. Why? Because scientists are ideologically committed to materialism. Because that's what they are steeped in round the clock. In the three tent poles, the three categories of explanation. Parsimonious. Yes, it's parsimonious. Is it logically consistent? No. Fails. Zero logical consistency. It is only logically consistent as a set of properties over there that behave according to laws. Then it's logically consistent. A physics, Newtonian physics. Once you start trying to account for the conscious agent, the guy writing down the physics equations, it falls apart. That's what happened falls apart. Why? It isn't logically consistent with itself. Explanatory power. Off the charts. It has extraordinary explanatory power. Why? Once you separate the world, Cartesian dualism. Go back to Cartesian. Once you separate the world into stuff, mind, and matter. Stuff and what it is like qualia. What it is like to experience things. <laughs> we, the artists and the, and the, the theists, have always been more and more impressed and more found qualia the more important of the two. What it is like to feel things. We, I feel these things, and they're so feelings. These feelings are so deep. <laughs> I read poems. <laughs> yeah, we're wussies. What do you want? <laughs> you guys are so lame. Yeah, kind of. But we're feelings. We're touchy feelings, guys. So you, you separated basically scientific investigation in two camps. What it is like to feel and experience and stuff. Mechanics. Stuff. How does stuff work? How does stuff operate? Cold hard facts. Empiricism. Show me the facts. Run the data. And then once we got... That, that's fine. It, it, it was born the Industrial Revolution. As I've said many times, explanatory power of materialism is off the charts. It was the birth of the scientific revolution. If we just separate stuff into a series of properties over there that behave this way and examined as fact, yes, there's an objectively verifiable series of facts about those set of properties. The problem comes when we start to get really precise. Why? Because there's somebody taking those measurements, examining those properties. It's called me, the conscious agent. And somehow I have to be fit into the equation mathematically. Welcome to the dawn of quantum mechanics. It's literally almost impossible to do. Now, that's why if the, ch if the choice is materialism, idealism, materialism fails. Materialism failed 100 years ago. And it is the tentpole of most atheists out there. 80% of your atheists out there are Aaron Ra atheists. Dumbos. <laughs> Dummies. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm trying to disrespect Aaron Ra, but his take on religion is dumb. Period. Go watch him with the philosophy guys from, from Islam. The Thought Adventure podcast. Here's a must watch. Steve McRae does an analysis of it. That's a must watch. The, the Steve McRae analysis will show you how, how it worked. 
These guys know their logical arguments for God. I think it was the contingency argument. They walk Aaron Ra through, it's like, a, it's like a how to present an argument clearly and correctly. They walk Aaron Ra right up to the doorstep of necessary being and he signs off on it and then backtrack. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now necessary being doesn't mean God necessarily. But it's like a case study in how to present a, a clear and concise argument. They converted somebody. It, bombs went off in the atheist community. Why? Because they converted somebody to Islam. I don't remember who. I don't remember his name. But it was a big, huge ordeal for a while. I can't believe somebody converted to Islam. Why? Because those guys know their stuff. Period. Thought Adventure Podcast. They're, they do a series on philosophy of mind that's a really good intro to philosophy of mind. It's well up to date. It's pretty good. They're solid. They understand what they're talking about. They know how to present these arguments correctly. And they'll, they will be successful up to a point. I'm doing something completely different. Materialism failed a hundred years ago today. I, I have res the guy who's talking to me who's been talking to me about Phaser. I wasn't trying to disrespect Phaser. The Five Proofs of God is a decent book. It's a decent intro to those arguments. The fourth one, the argument from eternal truth, is the strongest. It doesn't get you over the finish line, though. I don't want to sidetrack in this altogether, but I got to sidetrack in this for a second. The structured argument wins the day, period, hands down. When Matt Dillahunty is in a debate with a formal proof argument, he is doing it correctly. It's not a dodge. It's his job. It's his job. Be skeptical. Maneuver. Get out of the logical implications of the argument by hook or by crook. Any way he can. If he can get out of it, he can maneuver out of it, it didn't prove. Period. End of the discussion. Re-examine the argument, restructure it properly, and start again. I didn't say those arguments are without value. I say they don't get us over the finish line. They don't. Why? Because if it's a proof-of-God argument, you're the wrecking ball. There's nothing he can do. Why? Because the, arg the, logical, uh, the, the, the argument proves itself. All you need to do is present it to him. And he'll try to maneuver by hook or by crook and can. If he can maneuver by hook or by crook against the proof of God, guess what? It didn't prove anything. Period. Socrates is a man. Can he maneuver? No. All men are mortal. Can he maneuver? No. Ergo, <laughs> this is Socrates is mortal. Can he maneuver? No. Proves whatever point it proved. To prove what? Oh man, I forget what it's been proving something. Proved it. Proved it about the hunt to eat it. <laughs> See? That's how a logical proof works. That's how a logical proof works. There are parts of those arguments that are good and need to be polished off and reestablished and reconstructed. This is what dry apologists is doing. If you're an argument, you shouldn't just be presenting the arguments as framed. You should be redoing them, reconfiguring them, thinking about them afresh. Mix and matching them with other parts of other arguments. Eventually there is a series of knowable facts that we can hold everyone in the atheist community accountable to knowing those facts. That's why Jeffrey Williams and I, I wasn't trying to prove anything to him. When I'm firing on all five cylinders and he's fi firing on all five cylinders, the, the conversation should basically be indistinguishable who's talking. It happened with him and Christian idealism a bit too. When, he, when Christian idealism and him were talking together, it was indistinguishable who was making the points. It wasn't until Christian idealism started trying to prove God that we added an extra entity. We don't need to add the extra entity. We don't need to prove God. This conversation is taking place in theist-friendly territory. Two tent poles of 80% of the atheist community are annihilated, and if they haven't got the memo, give them the memo. Materialism died 100 years ago. It is logically inconsistent with itself. It has enormous explanatory power. Listen to this carefully, because Brenda already got this wrong. Eh, wrong, Brenda. It has enormous explanatory power. That is why it has been the reigning dogma of the scientific community for a hundred years, even though they knew it was false then. They knew it was false then. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense. It is logically inconsistent with itself. I'm not going to go into it over and over again in this video. Go read Materialism is Baloney by Bernardo Castro. They'll get you up to speed. Just know this for a fact. The greatest scientist of all time, Einstein, tried to defend materialism and failed. Why? Because it, it didn't work. He yielded the ground to Niels Bohr. You can go look it up. Series of letters between him and Niels Bohr. He tried to defend materialism and failed. Why did he try to defend materialism? Because they are steeped in materialism morning, noon, and night. Run the data. Show me the facts. To some degree, materialism is true. That's the point. To some degree. This is only a nuanced conversation for high-level chess players. The debate bro clowns are going to have to disperse. Why? Because they can't compete, guys.
the end of the day, the only people left standing are going to be the philosophical atheists. Jeffrey Williams, Ben, ben Watkins are the two. And I'm guessing Shannon will be one of them soon. Why? Well, she's the smartest. She's the smartest of the other group. She's smarter than the boys. <laughs> she's smarter than you guys. What do you want me to say? She's smarter than you guys. You guys are a little slow in the uptake. I don't know all the ones she pals around with. She, she'll be the leader. I think she's going to be the first philosophical atheist out of that crew of the, the whatever they're called. What do I call them? The top shelf atheists. She's going to be the first to be go for, or rationality rules. Rationality rules is almost philosophical atheist. He's getting better. He's polishing up his act a little, getting more nuanced. Go watch that conversation with him and uh, Jonathan Pajot. It's decent. He signs off on a lot of stuff that is basically provable fact. That's the point. That's the point. If scientism is false, guys, and those people who try to defend scientism doesn't even, don't even know what it means. The greatest scientist alive today, Carlo Rovelli, period. Greatest scientist alive today, Carlo Rovelli said we need what? Philosophy. Why? To make sense of the data. Why? Because quantum mechanics don't make any sense at all. We can't make any sense of it because of the same thing I've been telling you now ad infinitum. To some degree, the real material world both is and isn't there. That's fact. According to the physics, and the physics don't lie. If you want to formulate a new tentpole and still not believe in God, be my guest. I don't care. The new tentpole can be science first. Okay, why? Because the physics don't lie. You can put the physics at the top of the tentpole. Physics don't lie. Science first. The Schrodinger equation works. How do you know? It's powering your cell phone right now. Then philosophy. Philosophy at its best should be rooted, deeply rooted in truth. Provable fact. Philosophies get a bad reputation. Why? Because they sometimes go on metaphysical speculations. Go off on their building castles in the, in the sky. Most famously, I say Nietzsche. <laughs> I say Nietzsche most famously. Some people object. Why, Nietzsche's really perceptive and intelligent, sometimes rooted in truth. And then he goes off in a lull of it. <laughs> and he doesn't know the difference. Why? Because he's too smart. Too smart. He builds a castle in the sky that isn't really there. One of the, the one that comes, I think of off the top of my head, the law of eternal recurrence. Maybe true, sounds really false, sounds like metaphysical speculation, which is what we do not do here. That's why we don't believe in the many worlds of interpretation of quantum mechanics. Why? Many metaphysical speculation. Signing off on invisible entities that are not, that are not proven to anybody. We're not going to do that as Christians. Why? We don't need to. I eliminated their tentpole of 80% of them. They aren't going to be able to compete. With the, <laughs> they aren't going to be able to compete. The scientism is false. If you want to put science at the head of a, of, of a trio, physics, philosophy, theology. Theology is so stupid. If that's your opinion of theology, no. Wrong. Mm, wrong answer. The greatest scientist alive today. Did I mention his name already? Yeah, I mentioned his name already. Carlo Rovelli. Also started studying what? Drum roll, please. Buddhism. A religion. A religion. Oh my God. Ew, ew, ew. Get it off me. Get it off me. Yeah, religion. Get it off me. Get it off me, please. Don't even talk about it. A boogeyman. A religion. Oh my God. Run, run. It's a religion. Get it off me. Get it off me. I don't even want to think about it. A religion. Religion. Ah! <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I really honestly think that's funny. I'm, so, I'm sorry if my sense of humor is a little bit on the juvenile side, but I really honestly thought that was funny. I really did. I thought that was funny because that's what a lot of these guys act like. A religion. Ah! <laughs> I get it. You were raised in a religion that was kind of corrupt and toxic. I understand correctly. I understand. But religion isn't... It's not this, like, intense boogeyman evil that you imagine it to be. Anyways, I thought it was funny. You know, I apologize. Again, I apologize for my juvenile sense of humor. But now you know what my wife goes through. I swear to God. Dumb jokes are my stock and trade. They're my favorite thing of all time. Why? Because they're fun. The, my favorite comedy is Airplane, by the way. My wife wasn't crazy about it. She had only heard about it reputation-wise. The whole point is it's stupid. She goes, this is really stupid. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. It's stupid. Stupidest thing on earth. That's the point. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. It's the 
stupid. I picked the wrong day to stop smoking glue, to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> That's the whole, my wife didn't like, my wife has an awesome sense of humor, I swear to God, she really does, she's hilarious. She's hilarious, she, wants, she, she thinks she should be a stand-up comic, I kind of agree. Her new favorite comic now that she won't stop watching is Sebastian Maniscotta or something like, some Italian guy. He's decent, he's pretty funny, I see why she likes him. She, 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 but she, my problem with my wife is whenever she gets into something, she does it to the point where she drives you insane with it. So now it's on all the time. She's always trying to get me to watch five minutes of Sebastian Maniscotti or whatever his name is. I was uh, always calling him different things because it's confusing because there's this little nephew kid of ours is called Sebastian. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyways, uh, sidetrack. <laughs> okay, okay try, I'm trying to focus, focus, focus. All right, what was I talking about again? Um, focus. <laughs> uh, who, who am I? Where am I? What am I talking about? Okay. Um... I forget what I left off on. Anybody remember what I left off on? Materialism failed a hundred years ago today at the dawn of the quantum era. Why? It's logically inconsistent with itself. E no arguments. Over. The tent pole of the atheist community. Scientism and materialism. Scientism is false. The greatest, that's what I said, the greatest scientist alive today is going digging into religion. Why? To make sense. If you just think of religion, you don't have to think of, you don't have to sign up to the metaphysical claims of Christianity. Just think of it as an interpretive framework, okay? In Christianity, its strongest interpretive value, or its strongest framework value is ethics, the ethics of Jesus Christ. That's why they keep going back to slaves and genocide. <laughs> why? Because it's only the ethics of Jesus Christ that are important in Christianity. Only the ethical structure of Jesus Christ, and there's nothing very much to argue with. If you're going to build a humanism that would be a good hu and positive humanism, I would hope it would say something along the lines of all human beings have innate value. That which you have done on the least of my children you have done unto me. Blessed are the merciful. Say something like that in humanist form. Be my guest. Be merciful to everybody. Be kind, compassionate, and loving, patient, and long-suffering. Something like that. If you want to build a humanist version of that, be my guest. I'll probably put it in my videos and say, this is cool stuff. <laughs> I will. <laughs> this is good. This is positive. Stoicism, I'm going to introduce probably some elements. Some of it's good and positive and right. Be my guest. You want to build, build a secularized version of Christianity that takes the important values of Jesus Christ, secularize them. I'll be, if, it's, if, it's, if it's good stuff, I'll be the first person to say this is good. I'll be the first person to say this is good. Be my guest. Until such time. <laughs> um, but anyways, so science... The greatest scientist alive today has gone back to religion is not dumb. That's the only thing I want you to consider if you're an atheist. Religion is not dumb. If you think it's dumb, you're dumb or nor dishonest. Aaron Ross' take on religion is dumb. Period. End of discussion. Religion is not dumb. Period. And you sh if you're an atheist, you should be examining all different texts and reading it all sensu allegorical as allegory. All of it. Why? You don't believe any of it. So you should be reading the Tao Te Ching and seeing how it compares to Christianity and finding out almost immediately that there are overlapping truth claims in all these, almost all the religious texts all around the world. The one, I don't want to beat a dead horse, the one I've already brought up is humility. Four out of five major world recommend, four out of five major world religions recommend humility. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets it. There used to be this thing, four out of five, done a survey, recommend, I don't know, tr trying free spirit gum for people who chew gum. <laughs> four out of five major world religions recommend humility as a spiritual practice. That's true, actually. I think it was funny because <laughs> you had to, it wasn't that funny, I five, but it's true. Christianity teaches the value of humility, so does Buddhism, so does uh, Hinduism, and so does Taoism. Four out of five may try probably, probably they do in Islam too. You know, to be really humble. No, I won't, I won't make a beheading joke. I won't make a beheading joke. I'm not going to make a beheading joke. I swear off of those. Um, so, four out of five major world religions teach the value of humility. You ever hear that stupid meme that floats around? Can't all be right, but they can't all be wrong. What if they all have overlapping claims? Huh? Ooh, yeah, that means stupid. That meme is stupid. Deeply misleading and stupid. They have overlapping claims. Did none of you ever take comparative religion in college? Should have been one of the first courses you signed up for. 
Go watch John Verveke, an atheist, an agnostic, profound respect for religion. Profound respect for religion. The only way you should be handling religion, even other religions. Profound respect. Period. As Christians, when we are dealing with other religions, we should be respectful first. Why? That's our Christian duty. That's our Christian way. Respectful first. That's truly Christian. That's why. We should be. That doesn't mean you sign off on whatever... What doesn't mean you sign off on whatever metaphysical things they are talking about that you don't believe in. You read it as allegory and go, is there truth in this? That's how I read Tao Te Ching when I was 26. That's how every atheist should be checking it out now and reading it like that, as allegory. Grow you up a little. Be, be open-ended, philosophical in nature and examining. If you want to put science at the top of a temple, that's fine with me. Why? Because physics don't lie. The Schrodinger equation works. We know it works. It powers your cell phone. Physics don't lie. Then philosophy. Philosophy at its best should be rooted in truth. A hundred years before the Schrodinger equation was basically anticipated and intuited by two philosophers in particular, Kant and Schopenhauer. The, the, the phenomena nomina distinction of Immanuel Kant is extremely important for the stuff we're talking about. Why? Because that's what kills materialism. The world doesn't appear to you as it actually is. There's discrepancies between how things seem to you and what actually is occurring in the real material world. Oh, uh, wow, that went fast. All right, I've got to wrap this up. I don't want to... That was 31 minutes. I was having a good time. I got sidetracked. I apologize. Uh, I got sidetracked into stupid jokes. Uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. The more fun I start having with these things, the more it's going to be stupid jokes almost all the time, I promise. I promise, because right? that's where my head is at. <laughs> oh, my culo. <laughs> That's where my head is at. I apologize in advance for, for all the stupid things that I'm going to say. But, you know, that's what happens when I start talking. Ask my wife. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Again, I thought it was funny. <laughs> you know, if you, didn't think, if you didn't find it funny, sue yourself. <laughs> There's some cool cat videos. Go watch those. Those suck, Craig. Yeah, okay. I just did that. But they're really popular. I just did that. They suck. But they're really, really, really popular. They get billions of views. <laughs> don't know why. I have no idea. Something tribal and innate, as, as per like, tribal and innate, just to wrap it up, tie it somehow back to what I was originally talking about. Tribal and innate doesn't mean positive and true or right. It just means how human beings are wired. You are hardwired for agency detection. All of you, even the atheists. The athe atheists have disconnected the mechanism to some degree on purpose. That doesn't mean God exists. I can explain it all in psychological terms, all tethered to your unconscious mind, easily, and will. Why? Because I don't want to sign off on any metaphysical stuff that doesn't need to be there. We don't need to. We don't need to. The two tent poles of the, most of your atheists annihilated. Materialism fails. End of discussion. Why? It's logically inconsistent with itself, period. And I'll go over that enough times till everybody knows and gets the memo. You could still be an atheist in that I don't believe in God. Fine with me. I don't care. I don't care what you believe. Just give me the ties. <laughs> just, give me, just give me your freaking ties and get me a cool jet and then we'll be fine. You can, you can be an atheist on my cool jet and talk about, you know, whatever. Did you see that Aaron Rock video? <laughs> Did you guys see that Matt Dillahunty video? You wrecked that guy. <laughs> Again. I apologize, I thought that was funny too. I apologize for my immaturity ahead of time. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I uh, gotta wrap it up. Uh, um, these go too by too quick. These go by too quick. Okay, there you have a kid's has all for now. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.